okay. uh, I, I would say that uh, you know, uh, especially in our kind of culture, if you don't give money in philanthropy, you give dua in through philanthropy. You know, uh, you you give prayers in philanthropy. You give. Uh, uh, good thoughts in philanthropy, you know, so which is which is something like you wish that somebody is well, you know, pulo palo and things like that. So philanthropy is actually the part of a being of a human existence, I think. Everybody who has taken birth, think about giving in whatever format, you know, either in terms of love, respect, friendship. Uh, help by dole, by barter, by whatever. So it is, it is, and therefore it is also uh, being a recipient and there is hardly anybody who would not have received philanthropic uh, giving, you know, in whatever. I mean, even though you are Ambani's of the world or the, or the, or the Adani's of the world, I am sure you also need some help somewhere and that would be coming from somewhere, which may not be monetary, but may, many things, you know. Uh, we have seen if you are a big politician, big, uh, you know, uh, uh, a whole lot of cash, a lot of money. I see people go and uh, Matha Teko in Masjid and Mandir and, uh, you know, some guru is there who is giving blessings and all that. So all this, I would say, is a part of uh, the philanthropic ecosystem that we all live in. Now, of course, over a period of time, uh, you know, as the, as the system started growing, we started exchanging and, uh, you know, naming, uh, giving and taking in terms of numbers, in terms of monetary, in terms of the valuing the even the abstract into, into some kind of monetary and, thing, and so on and so forth. And therefore, uh, you know, as we all are, we also started developing uh, systems for, uh, for that. Uh, so I, I, I uh, you know, we are very lucky that Digital Empowerment Foundation has got many advisors who have written book on uh, philanthropy like Matthew Cherian. And before coming to this, uh, uh, you know, this talk, I asked Matthew, do you suggest me anything that I must uh, cover? And uh, he said that he sent me a WhatsApp note and he said that you should cover certainly this. And he has written this in, uh, in, in his book, which uh, you can download or buy from Amazon. Uh, so I will quote those and then there are a few more things to start with and then maybe I will share uh, my personal and organizational experience in the ecosystem of philanthropy. And so, you know, we all as a, you know, any country or any human being is part of their uh, religious practices, customary practices. And then, of course, you have your own constitution and country and all that. And philanthropy somehow fits everywhere. For example, Christianity, uh, you know, gives tithe 10% uh, to charity. Six gives uh, thus one, the, which is 10%. And uh, this uh, sixth thing of that 10%, we personally experienced while me and my son and my family, we were traveling across the country last uh, COVID uh, one wave. Uh, we met so many six doing, uh, you know, longer on the way to highways. And we, when we talked to them, they said that it's not a new thing for us because in any case, in our uh, custom, uh, we keep 10% for, uh, for giving or for philanthropy or for helping or for donation and things like that. Hindus, of course, have dhanam in their graded philanthropy. Food is anna dhanam, cloth is vastra dhanam, dhanam. Giving knowledge is gyan dhan. You know, giving anonymously is best called gupt dhan. And, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, by the way, even the Christ had said that you're giving, uh, in, in giving, left hand should not know the right hand, you know. So, of, of course, you know, uh, these days, before even giving, uh, we announce a big poster and all that, and philanthropy is also ego boosting and all that. But, but having said that, we have been growing under various customs uh, where all this is part of the custom, you know. Many people have created trust for this and they put all the money into the trust and the trust keeps giving and all that. We have built in our ages dharamshalas and madrasas and whatnot. Uh, we have created libraries under charity and, 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 and we, have, we have done, I mean, and then you will also see that most of the places of, uh, uh, as a practice, there is a donation box, which is always there where you keep donating. And then uh, even in the government practices, you have this, uh, you know, uh, chief minister relief fund and prime minister relief fund and whatnot. I mean, this, so what I'm saying is that it's part of the ecosystem that we all uh, do. 
but uh, i also uh, must uh, uh, mention that uh, for many many organization and people and the ecosystem uh, philanthropy may not always be the same as running a developmental organization or philanthropy may not be as uh, doing a masters in social work or something like that because philanthropy somehow is just and just only uh, broadly being seen only as uh, giving and taking as a donation you know but uh, but many organization who register themselves as a not for profit organization i know that all their life they don't receive any philanthropic money you know they they raise fund uh, from non philanthropic means also and when i say that it can be government organization giving which may not be considered as philanthropy philanthropy broadly can be defined as uh, uh, what personal philanthropy family philanthropy you know institutional philanthropy uh, organizational philanthropy what i mean how do you how do you classify that uh, uh, and many uh, family uh, uh, which they create a philanthropic money they actually go beyond uh, so called philanthropic definition and become an institution organization in itself where there is a proper system of uh you know granting fund and things like that which which works as as any commercial uh, fund or a venture capital fund or something like that but obviously uh, one thing that is always seen in those kind of thing is that uh, you know the purpose for which they give money is always and always uh, you know uh, for social benefits may not be profiteering and things like that so i was i don't know how, uh, your research amir uh, or researchers have gone into uh, doing a lot of study on what is available in the market uh, but i was uh, also going through some of the um, numbers that is uh, their uh, especially dasra and bain they do every year a report on uh, philanthropy and i was i was reading philanthropy in india Uh, is growing uh, in the last couple of years extremely big i mean uh, according to the that report private sector funding total to inr 64000 crore uh, you know i don't know if we realize that what how much is 60 64000 crore which is close to 23% more than the uh, 19 so i'm talking about the 21st report but which takes care of all the uh, philanthropy that had happened in 2020 and that is almost like uh, 64000 crore and the previous year in 2009 was 52000 crore and uh, i want to further uh, and i can send this report if anybody wants to uh, have a look and uh, read details um, private sector funding stems from four sources foreign uh, grant or the philanthropy corporate retail and high net worth uh, which is hnis high net worth individuals or families so foreign contribution account for a quarter of all funding domestic corporation donation also known as corporate social responsibility funding amount for 28% uh, retail investor is about 28% the balance is about 20% uh, and i will just read through the uh, thing like out of 52000 crore in 2019 Uh, 16000 crore came from foreign uh, came from foreign funding uh, foreign uh, philanthropy and uh, 15000 came to csr uh, which is domestic corporations and about 21000 crore came from uh, family philanthropy which includes um, you know high net worth people or family and things like that uh so uh, all together it comes 52 and this is 2019 and if you go to uh, 2020 the 52000 became 64000 and the division is uh, foreign source remain the same which is 16000 crore uh, domestic uh, which is mostly csr and corporate trust and csr understand uh, increased from 15000 crore to 18000 crore and uh, uh, but the individual philanthropists uh, or family or tr- uh, family trust that increased from 21000 crore to 30000 crore uh, which is uh, so if you if you see 64000 crore as total 
30,000 crore is, is, is individual philanthropists. Maybe also because of COVID, because in COVID, lots of lots of individual philanthropists give a lot of money, or they increase the number of their donation and things like that. So that is like 47%, 25% is foreign, 28% is domestic. Uh, that's uh, 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 broadly is uh, the number. By the way, when we say these numbers, these number does not include the whole religion-based philanthropy or a religion-based charity or a religion-based giving. I mean, I'm sure, uh, you know, if you go to uh, Tirupati Mandir, that itself alone might be extremely big or for that matter, uh, all the money that uh, goes into madrasas or through zakat and all that, that might be a huge money altogether separately. Uh, so all that is not uh, being tracked. These are the numbers which is in a public forum, in, a, in publicly announced, and, and, and these are the numbers which comes through uh, organizations like ours and, uh, you know, uh, yours or anyone. Uh, and, and so it is, on, I would say it is only tip of the iceberg. I mean, I would say most of this money that is actually being uh, looking like counted for, these have got paper trails, these have got, uh, you know, accountability, responsibility, and how it is being spent, how much employment it might be creating, and how many, you know, how much of impact it might be creating. There are a whole lot of separate, which requires uh, uh, to others. Uh, Shalmi has written, do I have a slide? No, I did not prepare any slides. So I am reading this uh, through the... A document that I downloaded and uh, you know but I can forward this uh, to, to, to all of you so uh, you know so uh, the point is that this uh, number that I told you 64,000 crore or 52,000 crore uh, incidentally is is also the number which is going to such organization like ours and uh, registered uh, societies and the trust and all that you know because uh, not that I'm saying the mandir and the masjid and all those madrasas are not registered societies, but the point is that their uh, donation portfolio is very different, mostly in cash, mostly, you know, does not go through the trail of being tracked of the survey and all that. So uh, that is altogether a, a big chunk that uh, might be happening. Cash donation being a country like India, where cash is always seen as the primary uh, mode of transaction and primary mode of giving or uh, taking, uh, that would be huge, uh, I'm sure. And I have no idea how one can uh, track that. So that that is more about, uh, you know, and by the way, there is another thing that uh, I was going through some of the reports is that India is unfortunately is also not one of the biggest uh, philanthropic country you know in terms of uh, individuals agreeing to give or something like that or big organization agreeing to give uh, if you if you compare to us uh, you know we are far far uh, behind and of course all this giving is also uh, an indication that what people like to give money for uh, you would see that uh, you know most of the money that i talked about according to the philanthropy in India, uh, as per Dasra report, uh, you know, these are the money you can track them either for education or for healthcare or for livelihood or for sustainable development or rural development or disaster relief and so on and so forth. But most of the money that we uh, uh, are not tracking or somewhere else going is that, uh, you know, how many people are giving for, let's say, uh, building mosques or building uh, you know, um, uh, temples or building churches or whatever. I mean, all those religious places. That is a huge and altogether a different dharamshalas and all that is is altogether a different kind of a scale and a different kind of area. You know, which in the developmental definition might not even be considered as the area that one should give for, you know, uh, it doesn't even come into that area. So th those are the things that I think if you are doing a study, uh, uh, you know, uh, we must study that uh, the relationship of development vis-a-vis -vis philanthropy, you know, that would be very, very nice because what, what is happening today, like Amir, you said in the introduction, we give money half the time satisfy our egos or a guilt conscious or something just because we earn money we thought that we must give also some money 
and we have no idea if you track that is that money converted into a bread for somebody or is that money converted into a ganja for somebody or is that money converted into some kind of water supply for somebody what you know i mean most of these money actually uh, if if you really ask me should have been going to fight poverty you know to 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 uh, actually create a developmental and this is better for the country but is that really happening i don't know uh, uh, so uh, it may be a good idea to see that how your research can go into the direction where it can actually uh, lay some uh, you know direction for those who are uh, giving money and uh, and no idea uh, that they know that where the money is going uh, uh so that's that's uh, one aspect of it i would i would say that uh, uh, let me uh, a little bit share because i i i i don't have too much of insight into uh, philanthropy in india from that way but let me let me give dfs example as what as an organization if it is a case study to learn that how much of philanthropy has actually helped df to grow um uh, i would i would uh, say uh, i i won't make a judgmental thing but the way digital empowerment foundation grew uh, uh, it was registered 20 years back as a not for profit organization and most of the money that we have received is absolutely uh, no cash grant any 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 of our 18 years of life we have always either got it from uh, csr funding or we got from international uh, donor organization or a multilateral organization or a bilateral organization like european union or uh, bill gates foundation or ford foundation or or uh, you know or uh, csrs and csrs both locally in india and internationally and uh, third part is uh, obviously uh very very low as far as the individual is concerned our experience of individual making a donation to df only started in the last 2 3 years uh when the crowd sourcing uh, platform became popular and we thought that we can also uh, directly connect to the to the individuals but uh, the, the other reason why we also started trying uh, directly going to the consumers or to the to the citizen is because uh matthew cherry and he is one of our advisor he suggested that uh any organization who is dependent on either uh, you know institutional uh, philanthropy or dependent on uh, trusts or dependent on csr or dependent on international donor organization is always at risk uh because uh, because you uh, one decision taken by one organization your 4 crore is gone 3 crore is gone i mean big chunk gone, uh, gone which is actually a big money but uh, but he said that if you really as a developmental organization or philanthropically supported organization if at all you want to grow better in terms of being supported you should always develop a system and channel of directly being funded by the consumers and the citizens even though it's a it's a volume game even though it is a big task even though in today's date uh, many many organization spend anywhere between 25% to 40% on raising fund itself you know um, and i remember matthew cherian was giving example that when he was running helpage for Uh, almost couple of decade or one and a half decade uh, he grew the organization from uh, 20 crore to almost 100 crore or 120 crore uh, a good chunk of about 25% of all the money raised used to go for marketing sales and telecallers and all those mechanism to raise those funds um, uh, whereas our dfs uh, uh, experience in the last 18 years is not a single penny has been invested in fundraising because our uh, working model of fundraising or philanthropic fundraising is not to raise funds but wait to be uh, wait for the donors to call us you know uh, based on the our work that we have been doing so it is more like what you have done it is being either talked about goes word to ma- uh, word of mouth and take a full circle and then many people get impressed and we are uh, then uh, you know uh, approached by various organizations 
or the philanthropic organization or the donor organization or the csr organization based on our articles they know based on our case studies based on our videos based on our storytelling based on our uh, thing that keep on increasing so word of mouth and uh, talking about the good work has been our model of fundraising in fact i don't remember when was the last time we developed a proposal then uh, threw in the basket of decision making and then got the funding our uh, our model has mostly been that we get a call we talk on, uh, bilaterally we discuss what to work and then the proposal is made based on the uh, verbal agreement or a broadly agreement that this is what we are going to go together and then of course we develop proposal or finances and then uh, make it a paperwork and then that is how uh, our model has been so uh, but but uh, coming back to uh, the the philosophy of sustainability of not for profit organization who is based, uh, mostly based on philanthropy uh, there is there is there is a huge huge uh, uh, risk taking uh, lies in each kind of model you know each kind of model most of the organization who are long runners you will say that they raise money from the they they raise uh, money money uh, retail wise like cry like helpage like uh, many such organization maybe childline maybe some several of such organization um, who actually is uh, relies more on raising fund individually or or uh, or or even if it is a big fund high net worth people get impressed and they uh, commit uh, money into philanthropy so our our uh, the second thing is very interesting you know uh, my understanding is that i see most of the philanthropic money uh, especially coming from donor organization especially coming from csr uh, area is a strategically thought after money either it adds value to their advertising capacity or it adds value to their marketing strategy or it adds value to their visibility or it adds value to their uh, you know even though government says 2% of your uh, you know net profit has to go as a as a donation under csr but if you really go one to one uh, assessing those donations or those csr fund from each of the company whether in written uh, i mean of course nobody writes on on a piece of paper or on the agreement but i see that lot of those work is directly giving advantages uh, either the perception advantages or advertising advantages or goodwill advantages or uh, marketing advantages to to uh, many of uh, these uh, uh, organization the second thing i have also seen which i don't know how many of you would have uh, seen is that many uh, companies also spend commercial money marketing money but work like a philanthropic money because they see a lot of value comes when you work in the social sector in capturing the market or when uh, you are to i mean for example uh, and i would not like this to be quoted but i am still taking name uh, and in from your recording remove the name like for example like facebook or intel or many of the organization we worked or like whatsapp it it it's it even it was philanthropic and in some cases it was marketing the money was directly related to uh, going into the market to create the future market you know of adaptability of uh, uh, you know digital inclusion or adaptability of getting practiced or trained into 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 digital entrepreneurship or which actually directly or indirectly would add value that they more more people becoming digital literate will go to more people on uh, whatsapp or more people will go on facebook or more people will buy computers uh, which will, will be having intel chips or 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 for that matter more people will buy internet through airtel or 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 jio or something like that which is again translating into business uh, and creating more and more business although it is not written on this piece of paper of donation you know so uh, i mean and and you feel not bad because you are at the end of it feel very satisfied that i have made digitally trained about you know 1 million people or you know 5 lakh people uh, that in any case you would have done even though you know other people would not have money uh, not given up money who directly or indirectly might have translated into more eyeballs for them or more attention for them you know so it's a, it's a it's a very uh, uh, a uh, complex uh, world where the philanthropy has reached to that level of 
size and mechanism and uh, and and uh, complexity that it actually uh, directly or indirectly touches the entire commercial system political system developmental system social system uh, and human development system it's 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 uh, so i would say at some point of time philanthropic money may not or may be also correlated with um uh, you know uh, uh, political you know in terms of thought process and i am not saying that political means negative only you know um uh, or a strategic value or something like that for example if you go through the ministry of external affairs they give so much of donation to many of the smaller countries you know why do they do it? you know what a strategy does this fulfill to them um at a country level or for that matter many big companies uh, agree to give donation to different other countries you know what does this make value to them do they want to expand their business in that country and they are just going soft in the beginning by giving donation and then you know getting admiration so that the business uh, uh, ambition can be uh, achieved i don't know but but what i'm saying ke, this complexity is 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 there and it has grown over a period of time it is no more philanthropic money or a philanthropic uh, uh, donation or philanthropic uh, size of the money that it deals is not an it, it doesn't happen in isolation it has got a lot of politics it got a lot of business it has got a lot of um, strategic thinking that where to spend how to spend for example you know uh, if i am spending my let's say 10000 rupees i uh, you know for me philanthropic is that this 10000 rupees is, uh, should benefit to the fees for the for uh, under 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 served communities child uh, education because i feel that is the long term for many people you would say as soon as there is a disaster like last year uh, the migrants were going you must have seen crores of crore people donated you know just in few weeks i mean because even today for large population feeding people is one of the most satisfying philanthropic act, act you know the uh, uh, and 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 if you ask them to give a long term money that the same money if you are giving 10000 for feeding so many people if you say that no can i transfer uh, 10000 rupees for giving fees for one year for five children because that will educate and it is a long term and it will be a good and quality outcome they will say no i am not interested you know uh, similarly you you being a research organization ask money from philanthropic money to do a research which will actually create a policy decision for the government um, uh, to take a policy decision which can change the course of the country they will say no no i am not interested and if you give the proposal that i am going to feed 10000 people hungry people tomorrow they will give the same money to you because that is more satisfying you know that that's all even in this uh, second wave of covid as soon as it was a matter of oxygen everybody was ready to give money for oxygen if you had asked the same money can we build the hospital which will have oxygen facility in the future they will say no i am not interested in giving you money for making hospital because it's an infrastructure that they are not interested which may not see the light of the day in 24 hours or in 2 hours or in 3 hours so uh, you know uh, um, very quick gratification of your money to translate into giving something is a very strong ego boosting or a guilt conscious uh, uh, satisfaction supplier uh, to to the money that you are giving uh, uh, you know um, uh, if uh, i mean i go to uh, uh, go for walk in the evening here in pondicherry town and i see about 3 4 people in different different lanes a uh, big basket of food they keep on distributing uh, to the to the uh, to the stray dogs you know and with lots of love and if you go and ask them that uh, you know you must be feeding these dogs for month after month and that is worth about 10000 would you like to give that 10000 rupees to create a animal shelter they may not give it they may not, I, i i doubt if they will give it uh but no feeding that those dogs in the same street which you don't like otherwise i mean is is not bad for them and 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 uh, they are happy to do that so uh, you know the ethics of uh, philanthropy the habits of philanthropy the the ecosystem of supply chain of philanthropy 
all these are also subject to custom, subject to ha or habit, subject to religion, subject to you know several things that uh, we are part of in the ecosystem. What really appeals to you? What does not appeal to you? You know, if you show the face of a poor people, uh, they might get attracted to give more money than than uh, solving the problem of uh, you know long term. Uh, uh, solving the long-term problem. So, so these are these are very very uh, interesting uh, 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 thing. Also, the role of transparency in philanthropy. You know, um, although uh, we say that the right hand doesn't know the left hand, but in a current ecosystem of privacy and transparency and uh, accountability and responsibility, if you institutionally give money then uh, how do you track accountability if you don't know the right hand the left hand you know uh, that how the money is being used because there is no doubt that uh, wherever there is money corruption is part of the business you know corruption is part of the practice you know and and it goes everywhere it, it, it it's not that uh, just because it's a philanthropic organization that means uh, those things are not going to happen so these are these are some of the things that I have been observing and I have been uh, experiencing that, uh, uh, you know, I, I must say that it is a complex uh, topic. It is, a, it, there is no straightforward thing and uh, there is politics, there is a strategy, there is, a, there is everything in, in, in philanthropy also. Um, uh, but one thing is for sure, even though the government is coming heavily on philanthropic money, coming heavily on the user of the philanthropic money, which is not for profit organization, as you can see, the number is still increasing. You know, the number is still increasing and uh, the practitioners are also increasing. Uh, uh, and that is something that is very, very interesting to note that, uh, you know, uh, how much of the control on the flow of philanthropic money and the user of the philanthropic money subject to the authoritarian government or the surveillance government or any of this is actually making a difference in the utilization of those funds or the use of those funds or funneling those funds into the developmental, uh, you know, uh, uh, developmental issues of the country. It is ironical though, is that, uh, you know, uh, the more, uh, you know, uh, uh, philanthropic money which is uh, flowing in any country is also directly a sign that your development hasn't been taking place. And that's the reason why there are some people who are, uh, who are uh, you know, uh, exercising that uh, philanthropy because they feel that there is a poverty in India. They feel that there are subjugation in India. They feel that there is a lack of uh, up application of the government responsibility um, as far as its implementation on the ground is concerned. So uh, on another way, there can be a debate that should we channelize all the philanthropic money according to the developmental indices or the developmental, uh, you know, uh, uh, the parameters of the country so that it directly feed into the uh, uh, lack or the lag of uh, application of money or the application of uh, of the um, uh, policies. So um, uh, I am stopping here, but uh, you know maybe I'll be able to reply questions or engage into dialogue if uh, there are questions around.